peaceful revolutionaries. Hello, hello, this is Sylvain Rachon. Happy to be here uh, doing another vlog. Uh, and in this case, what I'm doing is I'm doing an update on the cash technology. Since uh, I received some news, I did a huge amount of research in the last few weeks since I did that first, uh, that first post. I literally, I, mean, I did a little math based on, you know, the amount of videos that are out there and the time that, you know, the, the running time of some of those videos, and I, I spent over 50 hours listening to videos of Mr. Cash himself in a workshop, uh, answering questions, uh, teaching people how to build the reactors. Uh, uh, all, all that stuff, and and I also was able to find three really good uh, other channels, YouTube channels, of people that are uh, kind of following uh, the Cash Technologies uh, workshops, instructions, and they're they're trying to duplicate the uh, the reactors in different ways, and uh, they're doing it in a, using the scientific method in most cases, like essentially like trying to get real measurements. Uh, by by but by building using the uh, using the instructions, uh, and uh, and we've been in contact with uh, these people. I've been commenting. I've been answering their questions. They've been asking me stuff. I've been listening to them, and I've been asking my own questions and all this stuff. So so really really good. Like as as we go, uh, getting a lot of more information of what's going on and who is Mr. Cash and how he does things, how he thinks. Uh, and all this stuff. So I'm going to reveal some of my uh, thoughts today as an update. But first, just an update on our end, because as you know, we ordered uh, early October. We ordered two cash reactors from the foundations directly because we wanted to have the real deal uh, that is properly made and created, so we can do proper testing in a controlled environment with two devices and dismantle them, dismantle them and everything, take pictures and whatnot. And uh, we contacted the Cash Foundation um, last week, uh, early this week, uh, and uh, to, to know if, because you know, we know at the end of uh, October they were shipping from Italy, uh, like they were shipping reactors from Italy, so we wanted to know like the tracking numbers and these things like that. And what we got from us as a response was that they were uh, making <clears throat> making a uh, making ours and and other people's in Quebec, which is a province in Canada close to ours. And that's my, my friends who ordered them uh, there in Montreal, which is in the province of Quebec. So they're mechanizing the manufacturing plant. This is what they, they described to us. And uh, it'll take about a month from now, so let's say mid to late December, until they start shipping from that particular plant. So according to the foundation, we're not receiving these reactors from Italy. We'll be receiving them from a new plant here in Quebec. Uh, now, uh, as you know, the first step of validation of this technology, at least for us, is to, to have an unbiased person as in one of those people in YouTube, uh, build something according to spec and seeing the uh, his their kilowatts go up or saving electricity because the system is running on their uh, on their meter, uh, that kind of deal. Uh, so that that's going to take a few weeks anyway, or at the very least, if we receive the reactor and they're legit. Like there are no batteries or hidden capacitors or things like that in it. Well, that's that's also a very good step in validating the technology and moving forward. So we haven't gotten there. And uh, if, for those of you who think uh, this is a uh, this is a fake or a scam and that kind of thing, the delaying tactics are part of charlatan process. So that makes me a little bit worried. Uh, but uh, I'm you know I, I like to give the benefit of the doubt. Uh, according to processes, the money's already been spent anyway, so I'm, we're just going to keep watch over it and keep aware of, of things and kind of just going through the motions. There are a lot of people that are building the reactors that are showing some interesting results and effects that we're kind of discussing, uh, eliminating possibilities over, over the web and, and things like that, and kind of uh, looking at it and uh, trying to discern if it's, if it's old science, if it can be explained different ways. Uh, it's still very preliminary. There's no, uh, there's no real tangible result validating that the cash technologies actually work yet. 
But the second point I wanted to go to in in the video is in this blog video is um, uh, you know in all those fifty odd hours of listening to Cash uh, to Mr. Cash Maran Cash, I've I was able to get a much better sense of his approach as a scientist. He's a nuclear physicist. He says he's been been a nuclear physicist for forty years, uh, and uh, so his knowledge uh, is, is is a lot of science and scientific methodology. He's worked apparently in fairly big uh, institutions of science in England, I believe. <clears throat> That's where he did his studies, and as well as uh, in Iran, I think, uh, or or both. Uh, I forget details like that, but anyway, he he worked uh, at at fairly uh, fairly big uh, institutions as nuclear physicist, uh, based on his uh, his what he says. And um, uh, if you watch the videos, and I'll, I'll give you a link down there uh, as to where I get the videos of the workshops, because the the very nice chap named Kevin Flynn has been recording. And putting putting them up there for for us all. So I was able. So thanks, Kevin, uh, for the video, so we can follow the workshops and kind of get information from the source. That's a, a part of an investigation is about getting things from source, making your own mind, and compare with tangible results and making uh, and uh, evaluating from fact, not fiction or knowledge from before. You you look at what's real and what's what's new. You can validate from uh, things that you can measure in reality. You, you, it's not good to depend on other people from the past and kind of speculating. Good science means you know good testing and, and live. You retest if you need to, no problem. So anyway, like listening to him, I'm starting to get a sense that this guy. He, he, He's not. A, if he was a scientist, he's not anymore. Let me let me cut to the chase here. Is he um, he speculates a lot about things. He talks about biology and biochemistry, like the biochemistry of the body, for example, and says things that we know that I know for a fact are not true. Like he's been telling people, give you a couple of examples. Uh, you know, he's been telling the, telling us that the uh, the human body is a superconductor. No, it's not. A superconductor, by definition, is a piece of material that can pass electrical current with no resistance. That's what it is. Usually, I, at the best results we're able to get in, in, in the lab for a real superconductor with no zero resistance is usually at a very low temperature. I think I, I was reading, I think the... 165 Kelvin was the highest temperature we were able to do so far, and that was with extreme pressure. So it's fairly tough to do. Doesn't mean it's impossible to do it at room temperature. Maybe there's a new way to do it. No problem. But the the point is, the body is not a superconductor. If electric electricity that goes into body into the body naturally or passes through the body like a lightning bolt or anything like that, it generates heat and resistance it's measurable it always has been measurable even the electricity that goes through the neurons to communicate from cell to cell there is consumption of energy to make it to make it pass it and it, it it is there is resistance to it that's why it needs electricity to pass it it's ions going through a membrane i'm a biochemist chemical engineer i, I i've studied myself did experience myself on on cadavers on on different things. I mean, electricity. It's easy to test. It's been tested since seventeen like the late seventeen hundreds. Uh, that there's funny stuff going on with electricity, and there's always been a resistance in animals and everything. The body is not a superconductor, Mister Cash. Don't tell people that. And he insists on that. He also says that the, the body is full of guns. I don't really have a lot of comment about that because Gantz is a, a terminology and a, a science that he invented, that he, he kind of created out of his lab, his mind, or whatever it is. Uh, it means gaseous uh, nanostructure as far as I can tell. He has a fairly difficult way to, to, to talk, so sometimes I may not get everything right. It takes a while, and I listen to 50-odd videos, 50-odd uh, hours of video. 
So maybe I got it wrong, but that's the definition of gans, and it's essentially matter that is not gaseous, but it behaves like a gas. Uh, so you can measure it using certain techniques, and it's going to look like a salt or like a solid, or like a liquid. Using other scientific measuring techniques, this this material is going to behave like a gas. That's how he explains it. That is not uncommon. Uh, we've we've done that. Uh, in different circumstances, materials will behave like different types of matter, depending on how you measure it. Not that unusual. Uh, so that's okay. But just claiming it's Gantz is kind of weird. But I'm going to give him that for now because I don't know. It may be new science or whatever else. But, you know, he would need to describe it more. That's what I'm saying in this case. I just don't say it outright like it's full of Gantz. I mean, he mentioned that uh, you know it's, it's full of uh, copper oxide. The, the, the blood is, has a lot of copper oxide, which is the nano coating. There's no copper oxide in the blood. <laughs> there is not. Uh, copper is, is a free-floating ion associated with other compounds, not not oxygen necessarily. Uh, mostly not oxygen. It's it's usually in the middle of the molecule, uh, which is going to be called cobalamin, which is the uh, B12 vitamin, uh, as a function. It, it's not everywhere. Like he, he claims these things, kind of says them like, as if like he, he's an expert, but he, clearly he's not. He doesn't. He doesn't know like the physicality of the body. He he, he says, well, the physicality is one thing, and the plasma is another. Fine, well, you can talk about the plasma, which is your new science, the things that you're you're talking to us. But don't don't tell us things that we can measure from the physical world that you say is is really measurable and doesn't change anything. But don't don't tell us that uh, things that aren't true. You don't know. Which are, it it gives him bad credibility as a scientist. He doesn't fo follow proper scientific proceedings in writing and in saying what he needs to say. It, it gives the people the impression that he knows what he's talking about. Those that don't don't do those testings don't have the knowledge uh, about the physical world uh, that are specific to the body. For example, in my case. You know, so it just devalues whatever else he says from my point of view as a scientist that knows. And he teaches things to other people that don't know that are wrong, that are absolutely false. So you just should stick to the plasma. And another thing that bothered me is where he kept kept going to the metaphysical and into um, – the spiritual, like, like three coils, one is physical, the other one is so, the soul, the other one is the spirit. I mean, if he, if he wants us to do scientific experimentation, even crowdsourcing it with all the people that are building the, the devices, don't tell people that is uh, things that are unproven. You can't prove that a person has a soul. You can't prove that a person has a spirit, whatever that means to him. But he, he says, well, you know, the soul and the spirit, it also represents the earth and all these things with no proof that supports anywhere in the world. He doesn't present his own proof uh, and validation. He just says it as if, as if it's true and it's obvious. And, and people are asking questions and, and, as an expert. And he's, he tells them this information. They say, well, okay, well, if you say it and you have 40 years' experience in, uh, as a physicist, then it must be true. No. <laughs> you know? I mean, guys, you, you have to, uh, to have things that are valid. Like if, if the re for example, if the reactor technology reduces electricity at the end, we measure reduction of, of electricity, then obviously – there's something in that confirmation that he created in a lab that does that, points to him, straight up. And then we can figure out exactly with him or without him, like exactly what happens. And he apparently did a lot of research on how that happened. And he just has a, he just has a hard time perhaps explaining it because of the language barriers and, uh, and, and the way he does perhaps. But we can, we can figure that part out. Uh, but just just throwing stuff out there offhand, especially if we have like bodies of experiments and uh, and research and things I've done myself to, to show things are in a certain way, and he he says it wrong or he, he kind of just goes goes off kilt and just says stuff just offhand that are completely physically untrue. Well, that causes me some issues as a scientist and it just just discredits him. So we're going to get credibility for him if the devices work. Otherwise, he's just saying stuff that are metaphysical, spiritual, soul. And, you know, 
don't get me wrong, I am a spiritual guy. I really am. I like to meditate. I have that part of my life as well. And I have a belief system that like, that I can't prove, but I just believe because it makes sense to me of certain things. But I don't mix belief with science because science is about facts and things you can test and measure. Belief is things that you believe that may or may not be true or real, but you, you believe because of different reasons. They should remain separated. And he mixes them up like jumbled up and it, it, it just it, it, it's just discrediting it's just discrediting uh, like I don't see him like a nuclear physicist I see him like a guru or like he proclaims to be the messiah for example well he acts like a messiah just like you just have to accept what I say as truth even if, uh, if it's proven as wrong by science and the, he says himself like the scientists are are wrong what I say is right alright well prove it i mean if if the things that are physical are wrong well show me a report do a little experiment to show how it's wrong and then everybody every scientist can to duplicate that experience and she oh we were wrong okay fine you were right let's move on no problem but just saying like the body's a superconductor it's a problem it's a problem okay now um so I'm, I'm turning the page on that because like, all this, this hoopla and this spiritual stuff is kind of detracts me from what I'm really interested in, which is the free energy and to see if the technology and the plasma and whatever he calls it works. And then we're, we're going to do what we need to do to distribute it and make sure it's everywhere in the world and all that wonderful stuff. And that's the most important part for me. I mean, the guy can be very eccentric. No problem. He can have very little value as far as methodology for science. No problem. If the if technology works, great. Um, the second thing I wanted to, I wanted to mention because through those videos, there's there's some uh, I wanted to explain certain things because I've had a lot of, ex of questions and I've answered a lot of them. Um, you know, the the how they make the nano coating and as well as the guns. People were asking questions: How come is that color? That color? That color? And, and there's very few answers from people that know chemistry. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to answer them fairly quickly now. And then the blog has a little bit more explanation to it. And I don't go into deep details because you can do research on Google and find these reactions very easily. And they, you can explain that for yourself. But first, when you do the nano coating of copper, I'm giving you that example. Okay, either by heat or using the uh, uh, sodium hydroxide, which is the, the caustic, he calls it. Uh, first, uh, if you do, put uh, hydro, uh, hydro, <laughs> sodium hydroxide in water and you put your plates in, it won't react. That's normal because that reaction only works when it's uh, when it's hot. A lot of reactions in chemistry work only at certain temperatures, and this is one of them. And what it'll do is that it's going to dissolve part of the uh, of the copper and, and the um, the hydroxide part of the sodium hydroxide is going to react with the copper with the free copper. And it's going to deposit small uh, particles, molecules of uh, copper oxide one or copper oxide two uh, directly on the surface of the copper. So it's going to create that nano layer. So layers of individual uh, molecules that are somewhat associated to each other, but not as tightly packed as a copper metal. So he describes that and, and d demonstrates that fairly well in a... Uh, in, uh, in drawings. I mean, he's a, he's a physicist uh, by training, so he understands that. So it, that's credible. Like, it, it goes that. We call that process oxidation. It's like rust with metal. You can do that with uh, with all sorts of uh, materials, although the reactions will differ depending. Uh, but it's oxidation. So it's going to create a layer of, of schmutz <laughs> on top of the metal. In the case of copper, if it's copper, uh, if it's copper 2O, like Cu2O, it's going to create something that's black. So you you get that black or dark brown layer. Uh, if it's uh, if it's C two uh, oh, so copper uh, uh, copper oxide two with a two valence, it's going to be pink. And the uh, you know the it depends on the time of the reaction, the different uh, different temperatures and things like that. It could be a mix of the two. Uh, pink or, or or black could be totally black could be more like pinkish color depending on what kind of oxide because the reaction uh, the speed of the reaction is going to depend on which one it's going to be uh, so it, it gives you that coat of nanocoat so that's uh, very well known the oxidation has been 
done for forever. Your car rusts naturally in the salty, uh, in the salty rain and the and the splash from the from the, the ground when there is a little salt, for example, and it rusts your car. Uh, so that's an oxidal re reduction reaction. Okay, very very common. Uh, the second thing you do, the second reaction is when you put your nano coated uh, or you oxidize copper and you zinc, and then you uh, you put some electricity between between them, uh, or, or you just connect them. You know, uh, then in uh, and you have a salt water. He recommends uh, sea salt water. Uh, especially going to give like strange results and probably better results if it's salt water chemically because of all the ions that are going to be in the sea salt. There's a variety of ions in sea salt, including uh, sodium chloride and a whole bunch of other stuff in there and sulfates and whatnot. So when you put those electrodes in there, you're essentially creating a voltaic battery, uh, which has been uh, created in 1780 by uh, Luigi Galvani, an Italian. Um, so, uh, so you're supposed to generate the electricity from that or your, and, and there's going to be movement in the atoms in the solution. You're going to lose your, uh, your copper oxide uh, because it's going to go into the, into the solution. So you're going to lose some of the copper into the solution with, uh, into the water. And what's going to happen is the, the, the zinc from the plate, is going to start gradually to go into, into the water as ions. Uh, while there's other reactions that actually, um, uh, either have have chloride uh, chloride to go and go into the air, or or some other schmutz stuff that's going to uh, connect with the copper plate uh, physically, kind of uh, jam onto there. Some metal uh, could be all sorts of stuff because it's a mix of seawater. And the zinc, when it goes into the water, it's going to react with the water, uh, with the hydroxide in the water, and create a uh, white precipitate. It's going to create like a colloid that's wh that's white. If it's pure, with impurities like the copper in the water, kind of reacting as a, with a, with hydrox with hydroxide as well, uh, it's it, it may become pink or turquoise color because that's the color of uh, copper hydroxide. So that uh, that substrate that not that substrate that colloidal uh, mix like schmutz that's that's kind of floating in there. They call it, they call it a colloidal precipitate precipitate. Uh, that's what uh, Mr. Cash called the Gans. So it's physically, it's exactly what I say. Like the chemical that, that I, and it, it's going to be mixed. If it's seawater, it's going to be mixed with a whole bunch of other stuff because it's mixed in the water with a whole bunch of stuff, and you, that becomes your Gans. So somehow, uh, that particular process of uh, of uh, it's another process of oxidal reduction, actually, with where electrons are kind of transferred, uh, creates this gaseous nanostructure. Called Gans. If you measure it with certain specific piece of equipment, it has a gas behavior, uh, and it kind of does because it's kind of floating inside the water. To me, it has more of a of an aqueous uh, behavior, an ionic solution because it's a it's an ionic solution. It's a if you make it dry, it makes a powder, uh, so it becomes an um, an ionic solid if dried properly. Um, but according to Cash, this this precipitate is a Gans, and you coat that over your your nano uh, your nano coating, and that creates those layers he was talking about uh, that create a magnetical and gravitational fields and whatnot. Um, chemically, these are very very old and usual reactions. Nothing nothing strange or unusual about it all. So the only way I can see that this uh, this can possibly generate any side of reaction is the conformation, how you layer these different components, how you stack the different uh, the, the copper, how you roll it in, into the these the, the, the sh these shapes, and then it's going to do what it's going to do. That's the only thing that's different. Maybe that's why it's so simple because you can use common items to actually make it. But uh, it, it keeps me skeptical because there's nothing. Nothing new or magical. It's like, you know, nothing. No, uh, nobody noticed uh, these uh, these things for a long time, uh, except perhaps uh, Tesla. Maybe he did a lot of strange research on uh, electromagnetic uh, properties. Um, so it leaves me bewildered, but I'm completely open to giving him the the shot, like I've always done. Of, um, of 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 showing us something new out of common things, 
And there's nothing wrong with that. And we do that all the time in science as well. We discover things that are that were always under our nose, but we were not able to see them or use them because we didn't know they were. So we can develop a new science. No problem with that. Uh, so, so we're going to go uh, continue to do the testing. So ho hopefully you like the update and my comments. And these are honest comments. I, I try to remain as scientific as possible with everything around this. Because we, we want to, if we want to build a new world with new technologies, we need to build on facts, not soul and spirit and you know these things that are metaphysical and unproven. I want to build on facts. So let's see if it works. If it works, we're going to backtrack. We're going to figure out exactly how that uh, how that works. We're going to collaborate with uh, the foundation and whoever else wants to collaborate, and we're going to have some fun with that. All right. So that's going to be it for me to, today and this week. And uh, join me next time for some other topic. I'm sure I'm going to figure something out. And uh, and please uh, feel free to thumb up or subscribe to this uh, to this channel to keep updated. I'll catch you next time. Peace and don't forget to rebel. Have a nice morning.